has been going and your expectations for 2021? Yeah, no, the, uh, the camp has been really good so far. Uh, it's a very unique camp, you know, having a mix of the, the men's national team guys and, and, uh, and the U23. And obviously, this is a big year for, for both of us, you know, um, with them having the qualifiers and, and us having just, you know, World Cup qualifiers, Gold Cup, Nations League, um, you know, just a, a huge year for both of us. So it's really cool to see how the two groups have uh, blended together and, um, yeah, it's been it's only, you know it's only been a week and a bit. Um, we still have a ways to go, uh, but no, it's been definitely exciting and, and, and different. Uh, I should have mentioned also at the outset if you would like to ask Sebastian a question, you can do so by virtually raising your hand in the <laughs> box down at the bottom, um, and we will jump straight in with Michele Giannone from Univision. Oh, could be Spanish, Sebastian. Oh, here we, here we go, curveball. <laughs> Hola, hola, ¿cómo estás? ¿Todo bien? Thank you, Michael. I'm going to ask you in Spanish, but if you want to respond in either in English and Spanish for the American speaking. Journal. Okay. Has estado presente en todas las convocatorias con Greg. Incluso fuiste el único jugador de MLS en Europa. ¿Qué se siente ser tan importante en este grupo? ¿Y qué te dice Greg de lo que tú significas para USMNT? Sí, no, estoy muy uh, agradecido por, um, por est eh, estar en, 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 en tener uh, tantas oportunidades de, de ponerme la camiseta de, de Estados Unidos y hasta ahora, bueno, yo eh, en, en diciembre uh, terminé el año sabiendo que, que fui el único jugador que estaba involucrado en, en, en todos los partidos, fue sí, fue un, un, un orgullo grande y más que fue un, un año... De, de loco realmente entonces uh, pero bueno de, yo yo trato de en, en cada camp um, o, o, o en cada partido uh, en, yo intento a, a mostrar lo, lo que yo puedo hacer y si eso es suficiente para este grupo y ayuda a este grupo uh, adelante a mí me hace eso uh, muy feliz y, y bueno, ahí, ahí vemos como este año hay muchos partidos, muchas oportunidades y yo creo que el grupo, uh, el, a, a ver cómo, cómo vamos a formar porque son muchos partidos y, 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 y cosas van a cambiar, ¿no? Pero ojalá que, que, que yo vaya a ser parte de eso. Oh yeah, um, no. It's uh, I was just saying. It's um, you know, it's been an honor to uh, you know to be one of the few that uh, or, or the only one, I guess, last year uh, to take part in all four games. And obviously, it's been a, it was a crazy year, and I'm sure that there would have been more games. Um, but being uh, being involved in those four games was very important to me. And you know, hopefully, I can just take part um, in the games to come, which is, uh, as everyone knows, this is a huge year for, for U.S. soccer uh, and just in so international soccer in general because, you know, making up of the games that were lost in uh, 2019. So, uh, you know, hopefully I can just keep making this group better and, and, uh, and doing my part. Thanks, Sebastian. Next, yeah. we'll go to Paul Tenorio from The Athletic. Thanks so much. Uh obviously a huge year hmm. uh, for the national team uh, but also a lot going on on the MLS side with the uh, negotiations around the CBA and uncertainty of when the season is going to start yeah um, how do you prepare mentally um, and how are you thinking about being ready for games in March you know when you don't even know um, when you'll be starting with with uh, with the galaxy and um, has there been any discussion about what the options could be with the national team if the MLS players don't have uh, place to train yeah, no, honestly, uh, it's um, it's it, it's very uncertain times, especially with with the starting dates and, and things like that. And I know they're being discussed uh, on the daily. Um, but f as for me, uh, how I've approached uh, every day is just kind of focus on that day. And I mean, I'm planning on starting around that that time. And if it doesn't happen, you know, it, it doesn't happen. But at least. And thankfully, we do have a camp like this in January. So for, for most of us that are here, you know, we get the chance to, to be fit and, um, and and to get a game at the end of it to, to cap the, uh, the the camp off, you know. And, and hopefully, I mean, normally we'd go straight into a preseason and we'd, uh, 
you know, it'd be an easier transition into in, into our clubs. But, you know, if that's not the case this year, then we might have to just adapt and, and, and might have to kill some time off or, um, you know, so. And we did start a little bit, as we always do, a little bit earlier than everyone else. So whether we take, you know, a couple of days off or, I mean, I, I'm hoping that we start by mid-February, but, but who knows at, uh, at this point. Thanks, Michael. Hi, Sebastian. Just Hi. Uh, wanted to get your thoughts on Greg Vanny joining the Galaxy, and you know how well you know him, and uh, and you know your thoughts on his hire. Thank you. Yeah, no, Greg. Um, I mean, as we all know, he's he's had a lot of success in in in, in Toronto, and I mean, anybody who I've spoken to uh, spoke very highly of him. And I did get a chance to to meet with him before I uh, before I flew to Sarasota uh, to meet with the team here. And no, I mean, he talked me through you know his ideas and you know and 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 how the culture you know uh, or how we can create a, a positive culture in in the club, which honestly we've been missing for for some years now. So I think um, I think uh, I think it's going to be great. I have a, a really good feeling about it and. Yeah, I'm just really excited. It's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a good, a good new beginning. Uh, also, just a, a reminder, and I think I might have said it differently in the past, but you can find the uh, raise hand option in your reactions section at the bottom. Uh, we will move on to Mike Waitala from Soccer America. Okay. Thanks, Sebastian. Thanks for uh, doing this. Um, oh, there you go. You just moved. <laughs> no worries. Um, how do, how much has the fact that we're in the middle of the pandemic affected the training camp? Since you guys are in a bubble, um, are you able to do pretty much the things you normally would do? And, and if not, if you can just sort of describe anything that might make yeah. a different experience. I'm, yeah, no, I, I think the, the, the biggest thing is just to take the protocols very serious. Um, you know, as we all have been, you know, it's not, it's not like, uh, other camps, you know, uh, back uh, pre COVID where you can just kind of take a walk, wander around or go to the roof. And, you know, you, you, there is this kind of anxiety where you just don't want to run into anybody. And I think everybody, uh, as far as staff, uh, have created a, a really good bubble, you know, in that sense, we, we don't really run into anybody who's been coming in and out and, we stay on our floors. We try to stay in our room. We don't really hang out with one another in each other's rooms. So uh, I, I think as players and staff, I mean, we do the best we can. Um, but as far as training, it's it's been you know somewhat normal. I mean, we, we there's little things that uh, our stuff is maybe labeled and we're not you know just changing altogether uh, things like that. But um, for the most part, they've made it as normal as possible. So th that's been a big a big positive. Mike, if you want any more color on that, we can talk about it afterwards. Uh, next, we'll go to Emily Olson. Hey, Sebastian, thanks for taking the time. Uh, I think it's interesting because I was thinking about that last question and how it affects mm. this, but uh, Greg Berhalter had mentioned before that this camp is a camp for the senior guys to uh, be integrated, help the U23s mm. really uh, show them what being a part of and representing the U.S. and South team is. Uh, first of all, how does the bubble atmosphere maybe affect that? Uh, because there's not as much off the field right. interaction. And can you share a little bit more specifics of what you guys have been doing in these integrated camps to, to, to help them out? Yeah, no, I think we've... Um we've we've had to take a a big leadership role uh, in that sense and i've you know i'm maybe not one to you know be very vocal and start screaming at everybody or things like that but i'm you know i try to lead by example and i, I try to get to know guys and uh when i was younger you know i had like people like clint even josie who's also at this camp too uh you know just always just e e even just a chat walking in in, uh, in in the hallway can can go a long way and you feeling like by the time you get to the field, you, you know that player a little bit better, you know, or better than you did before. Um, I mean, definitely, first of all, getting everybody's name. I think that goes a long way as well, um, you know, because you used to probably play against each other or, um, yeah. But, uh, and, and obviously, we, we, we've come from all over. So it's, uh, there's guys that I, I've never met. So I just, you know, take the opportunity to kind of help them get adjusted, help them adapt to this new 
environment who you know it can be very intimidating at first but then you realize you know it's just like uh you know it's just like with your clubs obviously you're wearing the different crests and it, it weighs probably a little heavier it might feel that way so um i've been there you know we've all been there so uh, i try to do the best i can hopefully that answers the question we'll go back to michaela Mm. one of the games over there and you're going to be very important for Greg and the team during this year with all the competitions what do you, what do you see yourself playing in Greg's system I know you I know you say that you can play whenever or whatever mm. but what do you see yourself and if you have conversations with Greg about your role in the future uh, should I answer in Spanish or English no in English is fine yeah. English is fine um Yeah, no, going back to when I played False Nine, which is, you know, uh, different, um, but also exciting. Uh, you know, it was something that w we kind of thought of last minute. And um, yeah, I, I, I thought it was a good opportunity to try something different. And I think it just shows that, you know, uh, with me and Greg, at least um, he see, he he trusts me that I can do something like that. And he knows I, I'm going to do my best. Um, but you know, where I normally play would probably be, it definitely, uh, or at least in our system, uh, is you know it is that number 10 role. But I can also play number eight as well. Um, but yeah, my preferred position is definitely one, one of the tens. And uh, but if I guess now I know I can play a false nine, or I think I did, I think I did all right. Uh, or good enough at least so I mean if that ever if that ever happens again I think I'll be a little bit more ready so and who knows we you know there's a lot of games this year and and you know we we, we definitely want to go far in all of the competitions so we who knows where wh where it'll take me um, but hopefully it is in that 10 position